Hello, I'm Mixed Mars and Merman, and welcome to my channel. In this video, we're going to look at an 18 inch um, Mazport lawnmower with rear roller that I got in as part of a parts exchange sale of a lawnmower that I sold a 20 inch Atco Balmoral 20SK. Um, and the gentleman gave me some money and some two, my, two mowers on top. Uh, one of the mowers you've seen in a previous video, a 22 inch Mazport, that's done. Uh, this is another 18. This is one that has a bit of a problem. He said it, it ran, uh, but was a bit of a pickle to start when it got hot. And knowing what I know, and some of you guys and girls who are in the know would know that that is screaming out either spark plug or more importantly, coil to me. Uh, so I did test the machine when I got it in, um, started up, ran it for 20 minutes, it ran with no problems at all. And uh, when I stopped it, tried to restart it, it didn't want to start. It did start once, ran for about three seconds and then stopped straight away, complete dead stop, which tells me um, it's actually going to be a coil. Um, so since then I have now purchased a coil, and I'm going to show you guys and girls, if your lawnmower is playing up after you enter a grass box for the second or third time, and your lawnmower won't start, but when it cools down again, it starts up again, I'm going to show you guys and girls how to fix this little issue for around about £25. If you like to hit the subscribe button, whack the old bell, set notifications to all, that way you'll be told next time I upload another video, and it's completely free of charge to subscribe to my channel, it doesn't cost you a single penny. So without further ado, let's get down and dirty, and let's get this little tiny Mazport 18 inch up, running, staying running, and more importantly, start when you tell it to. Right, mass port number two. <sighs> here it is here. So a little 18 inch mass port rotor, a uh, rotor rotor or something they're called. Uh, they're from New Zealand. Um, never been to New Zealand. If anyone would like to pay for me to go to New Zealand, uh, free of charge, please let me uh, leave me a comment section in the comment section below. If you want to pay for my ticket and let me go to New Zealand, I'd like to do that. Uh, you never know unless you don't ask. So this machine, uh, man, it's tidy. Tidy machine, it's done a bit of work. Um, it's not, it's, you know, it, it, it has done some work. It's as simple as that. You know, the wheels are a bit bald, and, <coughs> um, but it has been well looked after. The oil is absolutely bang on the mark. Um, the spark plug is not the newest. However, I will say that that spark plug is a little bit crowded on the end, a little bit. So we have a machine that is saying, I don't want to run. I don't like it. Cable also looks like there's a cable fault on it as well. So have we actually got a cable fault on this machine rather than it actually, uh, he said a coil and it did smell like a coil to me. You know, it, it did scream out. I have a coil issue, sort my coil out. Um, but we've just got a bit of a cable issue there that I can see. I just ducked in the old shed here, I'm gonna grab an eight mil. Uh, what's that? That's eight mil. <coughs> eight mil on a little ratchet. And I just want to double check this machine is actually choking. Okay, because it's failing to start. <coughs> um, and it could just be that the cable fault is there and it's not actually choking. Okay, so let's just whip this off very quick. I wasn't expecting to do this. And this is all because my videos are not staged, they are real life. So let's just tap that out. Air filter is a bit, yeah, it's not brilliant. Done some work, so just gonna choke the machine now. Chokey, chokey, and it's fully choking, but the cable is actually broken up this end. It's doing what it should do, but it is actually choking. So we're on choke, so this machine should by right start, okay? There is fuel in the system, I can confirm that. So let's start it up. As I say, I've already had it running once, but then I couldn't restart it. I don't want to go then, see that? Nearly. So what I'm now going to do, I'm going to go and get a new plug. Uh, what is it, flatted? Yeah, flatted. So I'm going to get a new plug and a bit of carburetor spray because it should be firing and, and working, okay? Of which it's not. It's currently got a champion spark plug in there, which is a good plug. But maybe the plug's just failed. You know, maybe it's just a... Uh, done its hours. So let's get a bit of carb spray <coughs> and a new plug. And all we're gonna do is swap the plug out. Now, 
spark plugs you know normally do about 150 hours and they're sort of you know you can't guarantee them but there are some spark plugs out there that have been since 1936 and still working fine so take your pick let's have a plug out plug looks absolutely immaculate absolutely spot on who's seen that hey eh? that's lush but it could be a daft, daft plug so i just put a new one in ngk b211 going straight in there and we're going to whip that up not too tight put that on and we're going to try and fire it now back onto the choke I don't like it. So I'm going to take it off a choke and pour some spray straight down the throat. A carburetor spray. Now that should fire. Okay. So, no spark, no start, no issue. Let's get it fixed. Okay, so we're up on the bench and we are recording. We are live, people. Um... I'm not live, uh, been on me. So this repair, okay, will cater for any lawnmower that has a coil, okay? A coil is attached to the other end of that HT lead. And it is what, is, is what generates and tells the engine when to spark via the spark plug. That's what it does, okay? That's its job. Um, so this, what I'm trying to say is this repair will cater for any lawnmower just the way in which it comes off or you have to get to it may differ. That is the only difference. So you have to work some of it out yourself if it's a different style of engine. So this style of engine is a six and a three quarter horse, 190cc Briggs and Stratton flathead. You may have a Takamish, you may have a Suzuki, you may have a Kawasaki, whatever you have. The process is the same. What we're doing, the end result is the same, but just the way in which you get there may be slightly different, okay? So I've got two screws up ever, and that's gonna remove the engine casing. Now, if you're doing it for the first time, welcome to welcome to the old Bix Mower Show, right? Welcome. Get yourself a little Chinese takeaway tub or something along that line, just to put all your bits and bobs in. I use a magnet tray. You can use a carrier bag, all right? Or you can use a use a, a Chinese takeaway tub, and that way you have to tell your missus she's got to buy your Chinese the night before you fix the lawnmower. That way you get Chinese on top. You see, that's what, that's what I do. Um, so remove any screws, any paneling that enables you to get at it. Okay. So I've got three screws here which I've now removed. I'm now just going to disconnect my pull cord. I think I can. Uh, I'll take all that off. Oh, what a silly design, Masport. Okay, so I'm going to sort of move it out of the way then, like hither. I want to take that off because, um, because I want to remove the pull cord. Uh, whilst I've got this off, I'm going to be doing a pull cord change on it anyway. Because uh, the pull cord, oh, not too bad, I'll inspect it, but I only get a 10 mil. There is my 10 mil. What is? Right, 10 mil. I've got some really long, stupid extension bar at the moment. Use it, use it in the last video. Um, let's just loosen that off. You might be able to see what I'm doing. I've got, I'm right up top of the mower, just removing the pull cord bracket. That's what I'm doing. Nothing special. You're not missing a lot. Just removing the pull cord bracket off the top. That's it. Well, that way, I can then remove the pull cord from all its assembly or all, all the casing and just so that bit then come, comes off and away I can get rid of it yeah so keep all your bits and bobs together all right it's important okay so I use a magnet tray that way I know where all my bits and bobs are as I'm as I'm working away so there's my magnet tray that goes in there now there is fuel in this system okay there should be no need for you to tip the machine up, so don't worry about that. So on a Briggs and Strat, let me get rid of this ridiculous extension bar I had out earlier on. Let me get something a bit more, less challenging to work with. It's better. Uh, I'm gonna want uh, a 3 8 or 10 mil. On these Briggs's, generally they're, uh, they're a 3 8 okay? But it might be a 10 mil. So grab yourself, um, the relevant socket now i've got lots of sockets and bits and pieces you guys and girls may not have that you may not have the luxury okay but if you've got a little spanner set you, you can get around it a little socket set no problem but i use power tools is what i use so disconnect your ht lead straight away because that way that you know your machine is not going to start okay you then want to disconnect 
your um your screws there. So that's a 10 mil. So that's holding on. Some are 10. Let's put a 10 on there then if you're gonna be awkward. Oh not a 10. What's that? That's a 10. So it's, so it's skidding on it's skidding on a 3 8 and it's skidding on a 10. There you go, back on the 3 8 again at light on that one. I think someone's been in before me. Yes, they have. All right, that's gone. So I've got two there, one, two. Uh, I want to remove this top one here. Now these would be an eight up here. Eight mil. So I want to grab my other extension now, uh, which would be my thin one. I can then transfer that back to an eight and keep me keep my three eight separately. Okay. That's good. Let's put my three eights in there and my eight mil in there. So my eight mil. If you see little tiny ones up here, there's three of them, but don't drop them, right? Put them in a magnet tray or a Chinese tub. That way you're not losing no bits. Okay, oh, drop one. I've dropped it in the drawer. Uh, set of uh, forceps, hemostats. Um, let's get hold of that, that's better, right, get rid of that. Because I've been doing this for a little while, I've got quite a few tools, so I'm, I'm, I'm sort of uh, used to this. So around the back here now, you can tip this back if you're lucky. There is another um, 3 8 around the side here, down here, but I might be able to get away with not actually removing that. We should see in a minute. I may be swearing in a minute because I have to take it off. So I'm going to grab my 3 8 again now, back to a 3 8 And you've got, down here, in the depths, you've got one here to remove. Which would be that one. And one over here at the back. Well, they're done right up there, were. You old New Zealand boys do it up tight where you come from. Right, now I might be able to get away with it. Lift this up. It'd be a bit caught up in place. Let's go get this caught up in the oil filler. There it goes. Lift that up, and hopefully, Bob Durant or Sally Durant, lift that up. And out it comes, right? So there's your, so there's your, there's your pull cord off. Now, what I will say is that this coil looks particularly rusty, and that could be the only problem with this. It might just be a bit rusty. Okay, the coil itself may not have actually failed. They do fail if they go rusty. So I'm trying to find a quarter mil, which is that one there. So one quarter, and that's going to remove. Uh, the core itself, okay, so your core is this little tiny gubbins, just here, right. We're going to remove the coil. Two bolts to come off, eight mils, of course. Okay, they're off. We're going to lift our coil up. It'll be stuck onto a magnet, okay, I'm going to remove the wire, which is that one there. Right, take the wire off of here and all, take that out. Bit of bending going on, there goes. Right, so he calls off. Now I'm just gonna double check this coil wire, making sure that's not got no cracks in it. If that coil wire's a bit crimped up, um, that could be a problem too. But this coil itself, look at the state of this coil. Um, it's absolutely rusted to buggery, right? However, there's good terminal points here. These are not very clean. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna risk it for a biscuit. I'm gonna try and clean this coil up. Is the coil broken uh, because uh, it's rusty, or is it just because the core is actually duff? We can find out. I'm gonna hit this with a, with a, on a wire wheel, give it a good clean up, I'll be back to you once I've cleaned it up. Right, so, um, that core now has been completely cleaned and um, um, sanded down on the wire wheel, on, on, on the old bench, and, and I'm happy with it, okay? Um, so now we're gonna test the coil. I hope you can see my, my, old, my old multimeter up here, it says one on there. I've got it on tw on 20k, I've got my leads on, and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my posi into the, into the old hole on the HT lead, and then tap that onto the, onto the tab. Coming out at 9.3, that's a little bit high. Just a, not, not a lot, right? It, 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 uh, that's passable. On here as well, 9.3, the readings are consistent. 
Okay, you can also check for continuity if you wanted to, just, just to make sure that you are actually getting a, connect, a good connection throughout. But because we're getting constant readings through there, I'll say that's not an issue. You can also check for continuity through um, through the old um, end of a wire as well. So you've got a beat there, so you're going to put the end of this wire, end of this one on the end of that wire, just there. Tap it into here. So we know we are getting a continuity, we haven't actually got a break. So this is actually on the wire test. So bang, so we're getting continuity there. So we know the wire's good. The call does sound a little bit high to me, but guess what people, right? I've done a big video on this, <coughs> and it's done very, very well in views, how to test a coil. But this call could be reading okay, right? But it's actually fading when it gets hot. That's the issue. It, it won't start when it's hot. So that could be a completely separate issue. And to my knowledge, you can't actually test these um, for, for breaking down. So what I'm going to do is I'm just not going to bother, okay? So you can try if you want to. You can go, you can go, and, go and fit your old core off, you cleaned it, to, to your machine. If you want to do that, <coughs> go ahead, feel free, and uh, what have you. But I picked up an, another coil uh, for 20 quid, okay? For what it costs, 20 pound, it's, it's not a lot of money. Um, and I, I'm not going to lose no sleep over it um, at all. Anything, anything it didn't come with, I'm a bit disappointed to you guys over in, in China. You would have thought it'd come with a boot on the end of it, wouldn't you? Hey, eh? what's up with them people over there? Let me put a boot on the end of that because um, you don't want that hanging out, do you? So let me find a, an old machine I've got scraps on me. I'll remove the XTD boot, get that fitted, and I'll be back to you, blinking guys in China. Right, so because my friend's in China, didn't put a boot on it, I've got an old boot here. All I'm going to do is just going to force that in there. I may need just a little bit of oil, just a smidge, or a bit WD-40 might be even might be more preferable. Just to squirt in there, just to lube the old hole up. Nothing worse going in dry, nothing worse. Bit of a lube. Ah, oh, sausage party. Right, so that goes into there like so. And then on some of these Briggs, right, a lot of them, they've got like, he's got these words on it. It'll say cylinder side, and it'll say this side out. Out is up. Cylinder side is near the cylinder. Some of these Chinese ones don't have that, okay? So what I do is I go by the tab goes underneath, all right? Tab underneath, like so. Just double check it's gonna line up on the holes, which it is. I need to put my little tiny uh, tab onto there. Push that on. Come on, baby, love my fire. That goes on there. Put that call on. All right, now I wanna do me uh, do that. Let me grab a business card here. Uh, we have a Terrell Fixes All on YouTube. He's quite a good guy. He's my mate Terrell. I want to just spin that flywheel around the touch because there are magnets on here and it will help you. There's magnets here which, which will make the call stick. So get your business card, okay? Standard business card, chuck it in there. Uh, get covered it caught up. And then make sure the business card is between the coil and the flywheel, all right? That's all you want, something like that. That go in there. I'm quite happy with that. Sit it down, nice and neat, and make sure that wire is not getting crimped up anywhere, not getting caught up, okay? Because it will do, and if it gets caught up, like I say, then you'll be looking for a uh, for an alternative, okay? So let's just plonk that into there like that. This coil was bought online via, I can't remember who I bought it with now. Uh, it wasn't Garden Hire Spares, it was someone else. Mower Magic or something, I can't remember. Uh, two bolts. Now you're gonna know instantly if you bought the right, if you bought the right coil or not, because um, it won't fit, the holes won't line up. But th this coil said it fitted this engine number. So I'm gonna wind that down, and I'm not gonna go mad on these, okay? Because I don't need to be. But it just wants to be down, because you want that to make a good circuit throughout, okay? So now I'm gonna bring this wire down, all the way down through here, I'm gonna pinch it through without pinching the cable, down it goes there, and it's gonna sit on there just like so a bit later on. Okay, uh, where are we, Mr. Mr. Boot? Uh, which way around are you? It's twisted on me, there it goes that way around. That's gonna sit on there, like, come on baby, like that, hold it on there. That's gonna sit on there like that, eventually. I'll find it, yeah, there it is. Uh, because it's not the right boot, because these Chinese guys don't supply you with one, you've got to do some 
make it fit. You know, you've got to hang on to it a bit and then it goes. That got me a lot. Okay, eventually, once the cool, cool wall settles down, it'll be okay. So that's all you have to do. So just remember two things. Remove the HTD whilst you work on the machine and then just rotate your card out of a coil. Keep that because you want it for next time, okay? So now we have a coil uh, fitted to your machine. The wire's good with test for continuity. I will keep hold of this coil and I will check it another day, but I think personally for what it is, 20 pound, let's just move on. This machine is 2012, 2000 and something. I think it's 12, so it's done a few years already. It's been commercially used. So do you know what, a new coil is also a good part, a good reason to sell it, you know, as part of a selling point. Brand new coil, ignition module just fitted. If you use the word ignition moil, uh, module, they think, ah, oh, yes, it's had a brand new gearbox on it. I'm just checking the condition of the pull cord itself. That looks really, really good. So I'm not going to put your pull cord on there. No point. I'm now going to try and slide this pull cord assembly back over. Just mind how you go. Flow. Don't go pinching nothing now. I'm just about that cable on the coil. If you pinch that now, you'll be looking for a new cable. Um, that's got to sit down there. You might get a little bit of a pull just to line it all up. Who's Paul? Uh, what's the guy? Down there, Mr. Mr. Coil. It's just a bit of a pickle just to fill it. I'm just double checking it. Everything's going down as it should do. We're getting caught up here somewhere. It's not liking it. Because it's on that at the back there. Right, there you go. Right, so you've got random size, little tiny cowling, which stops glass getting in there, much like goes in right and all. That's gone in, right, that's gone in, that's gone in. Oil filler's gone in, that's gone down. We're not pinching the HT lead. Okay, that's really important. So now we can now fit them, them three eighths. Them three eighths, them three eighths, them three eighths. Fit them back on, which would be uh, no, no biggie. Uh, no biggie, no biggie, no biggie. That one there, that one there, we'll go for those first. So right down the back here. Push him down. Got one here as well. That's that one. And then we've got two on the front. Just start that one off. That one's the wrong bolt. That one goes in the back there, Mick. That's too long. The longer one's going to the back. That's gone in. And that one just there. Oop, and he dropped it. That's gone in. Just zip them up now. Now's a good time to take any engine numbers you want. Once the engine's apart, there's engine number just there. So feel free to take, take your engine numbers now, just so you've got it for later on. Um, with that done, I'll bring your pull cord back round. Through there, get rid of that. Bring this down. And remember them two little tiny eight mils we had earlier on. Uh, three of them, sorry. Get your little eights. So you don't, need, you don't need a lot of tools to work on these machines. You just need a good selection, you know. Imperial and metric. Well, I've got an incoming call coming. Who's ringing me up? Who could that be? Oh, it's my Nana, two seconds. Right, that was just Nana, wants me to pick up her tablets, so that's no, no drama. Uh, what about, that's a quarter. Uh, don't need a quarter, because a quarter was for the coil, wasn't it? So I don't need that, I want it. I want the eight. Eight mil. And that's a three on here. Now, just go a bit careful, because if you drop them, you'll be taking it back off again to go and retrieve your bolt. So just go very careful. Uh, uh, just just start them off to begin with, so you get it all lined up. As I say, your lawnmower may not have these, it may be slightly different. But the process of elimination is the same. There is the hole. There it is. Some just have three bolts on the top and you remove the whole lot in one go. Yeah, but these ones don't. Well, that's that. So, now what we can do is I want to now use my clamp, which I put down somewhere here, oh, there it is, I'm gonna get my clamp, and I'm gonna tie off a dead man's handle at the top, okay, with a clamp, so that's now, that's a wall out there, right, it's up there, a big clamp up here, look, 
and uh, I've clamped it off, right? So I now know that I can now spin this pull cord with relative ease, okay? Although, although there is compression in there, I can, I, I can still, still spin it, okay? So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna remove that spark plug, okay? Spark plug to come out. If I can find my spark plug wrench, of which I had earlier on outside, didn't I? Hmm, where's that gone? <clears throat> I've got others here, I can choose another one, mate. That's no drama. Just use one of these ones then. Can't find the other one though. Must be outside. So I'm going to remove a uh, touch spark plug. Oh. I'm going to take that out. And we're now going to fit that into HT lead. And what we're going to do is just going to short that out. Put it about there somewhere. Just so it catches. All right. That's what we want. It's a bit fiddly. There you go. That'll do you. Perfect. Now I'm going to pull this pull cord. Now if I get a spark, we're winning. Oh, I've got an absolutely beautiful spark, and I mean, she is a lovely spark. Okay, now, if this engine starts when we go outside, one or two things. One is we've either repaired the fault and spent 20 quid, or we've just bypassed the fault by putting a new coil on, and there's nothing wrong with that other coil. Now, if you're in my trade, in my hobby, what I do for, for a bit of a hobby, then you've now got a spare coil. But I'm going to mark that up as maybe. It won't be marked up as a good call because I don't know, but I will put it on another engine at some point just to validate it. If it's no good, then I'll, do, I'll just throw it over the hedge and get rid of it. Right? So now I know that, that we've got a lovely big spark now. I'm happy with that, really happy. Because um, the lawnmower that was actually sold to me as a part exchange, as a going concern, whoever Scott was very honest, he said this one got a bit, has got an issue, Mick. But based upon the information he gave me, I was nearly convinced. I knew exactly what it was. And even he had been told it was a coil. Um, but some people just don't have the ability or don't, don't, don't want to even take that on. Because they think, oh, module, ignition core module, I'm not touching that. That sounds, that sounds expensive, you know? So people do get rid of it and what have you. But 25 quid. It came in two days. Um, and we're laughing. So hopefully, we've actually now fixed that. Is that going? Oh, we're not me. Oh, it's going. Where's that going? It's right back here, in there. Let's just get that one started. Oh, is that the right, is that the right one or what? <coughs> yeah, it is. You know, it's catching. Let's put that there. Let's put all that together. I'm going to line these holes up here too. I ain't lying, that was it. And half my life fighting with, with screws that don't want to go in. Where are you? There. That's that one in place. So this is a big engine on here. This is a 6.25, it's a big boy. Not your little one, not your little 300 series. So it's definitely worth doing. Let's put that in. Oh, I don't like going in there, I'll tell you. But it will. Well, that's that one in. We'll wind that one down. Now this is yet, yet got to have a full service, okay? But the oil is fantastic, I know it is. It's already had a new spark plug. The air filter was a bit dicky. Well, it'll have a new air filter anyway. I've got to sharpen the blade. I've got to do all that sort of stuff. Just found me a, found me a socket. Um, so I'll put a pull cord handle back up here where it belongs. It's currently floating down here. I'm going to bring it outside and we'll go for a, uh, for a fire up. If it runs with no issues, um, then we're on a winner. And I'm assuming that fault has then gone. So we have actually replaced the module itself. Um, I can bring it back in at my own leisure and service it exactly the same way I service the other Mazport, the one with 22 inch. And if you want to know how to service your Mazport, go and check that video out there. Okay, Bazport is now on the lawn. Uh, new core fitted. I've checked the oil, um, it was a little bit low. And also this throttle cable was not choking. Um, so I put a second hand uh, cable on it because this end was broken up here, which I have now fixed. So 
that's now working as it should do. It was working beforehand, but the cable's actually broken. So just got to put a few more cable ties on just to, just to hold it out of the way, just so it's, it's, it's tidy. But anyway, back to the, uh, to the main story. And that is this machine uh, was failing to start. Um, when it got hot, it was a pig to start when it was running, but it wasn't running since, since I've got it home. So I've only had it fired once. It ran for 20 minutes solid. And then after that, couldn't get to start or it started once for three seconds and that was it so hopefully now now we've got a decent coil on there um and i have confirmed with a spark there's a lovely big bright spark as well hopefully we'll have this machine will now fire and run so let's um put it onto uh, onto choke it's a manual choker dead man in and see what we get So it runs. Now it did sound a bit knocky, but I'm, I'm convinced that's not actually the engine. I think it's them blades underneath. They've got, it's got the same blade system as the other one. So they do, they do knock about underneath there. Um, I don't think it's actually the engine. Okay, Mazport mower now all up and done. As I said, no spark, no issue, no problem. All you've got to do is, is either test a coil or for 25 quid to 15 quid, just change a coil out. As long as you're checking the continuity between the, um, the wire like I showed you, clean the coil up, check that as well. The readings were about nine points something, which is not excessively high, but it is in a little bit of a high range. Um, but I had obviously preempted that and just bought a new coil for it. And that coil's running lovely anyway. A cheap Chinese copy coil, 20 quid, away you go, job done, just move on with the day. No point in, in mucking about, because I can't guarantee the life of that coil, because that machine's always done quite a bit of work. So I wouldn't want to sell it, and then that coil then maybe, you know, perhaps fail it within, within two or three months, and it comes back. A brand new coil, good to go. So if you've got no spark, that's a video for you. Don't forget to hit the old subscribe button, whack the old bell, set notifications to all about what you'll be told next time other than the video. This machine is now on its tests and uh, will be running for 35 to 40 minutes as long as it runs with no issues, uh, doesn't smoke, doesn't do anything it shouldn't do and I can start it after it's got hot, which is the main, the main reason it came in the first place. Um, it will then come in, base sharp and balance, all changed. I'll do a carburetor clean as well because it was his backup mower, hasn't been used for a little while so uh, I may just have a carburetor off anyway to service the carburetor, clean it all out and get that done just, just so I'm clear in my head I've done everything I can do. And that mower be up for sale. Nice little mower, nice little roller um, metal mower on the back there, metal roller to stripe your lawns. Yeah, super, super happy. Anyway, I've been yakking for long enough. I'll catch you next video. Look after yourself, guys. And more importantly, take it easy.